Hello, I'm Miss Ginsburg with No Adam, and today we're going to be reading Life on Earth. This is a student reader in Unit 3. Desert vs. Rainforest. Life in the Sahara. The fennec fox is the world's smallest fox. It weighs up to 1.5 kilograms, or 3.3 pounds. This is smaller than many cats. It has enormous ears. See those ears? Its ears help to keep the fox cool. Staying cool is important because this fox lives in the Sahara Desert. The Sahara is in the tropical climate zone. It is the world's largest hot desert. It covers most of North Africa. The temperatures can reach 54 degrees Celsius, which is 130 degrees Fahrenheit in the Sahara. There is very little rain in the Sahara. When it does rain, the water quickly evaporates because of the high temperatures. The Sahara environment is harsh. Because of this, few animals and other living things can survive there. Animals that live there need ways to cool off in the heat. Fennec foxes have large ears. They also have long, thick hair. Their hair keeps them warm on cold nights. It also protects them from the hot sun during the day. The foxes are also most active at night. This is because temperatures are cooler at night. Camels are another kind of animal found in the Sahara Desert. Camels in the Sahara have soft feet. Their feet let them move quickly and easily through the sand. They can survive for 17 days without drinking water or eating. Capturing the sun's energy. All living things need water. An organism is a complete living thing. Organisms in the Sahara have different ways of finding water. Date palms are plants that have long roots. Their roots reach water deep underground. Date palms then store the water in their roots. Organisms also need energy. Energy is the ability to do work. Moving an object is work. Heating up an object and charging an object are also work. Organisms need energy to survive, grow, and reproduce. All energy on Earth begins with the sun. As the sun shines, it produces light energy. When the light energy reaches the date palms in the Sahara, the trees capture the energy and turn it into food. Trees capture sunlight because they are producers. Producers are organisms that capture energy from sunlight. They do this through a process called photosynthesis. All plants are producers. Producing energy. Date palms and other plants have leaves. These leaves have internal structures that collect the sun's energy. These internal structures are called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts use the sun's energy along with water and carbon dioxide, to create a sugar called glucose. Glucose is food for the plant. It gives the plant energy to grow. Plants store extra glucose in their leaves and other parts. Chloroplasts also make oxygen. Oxygen is a gas. A plant that receives no light cannot make food. Plants also get nutrients from the soil. A plant will not grow if there are not enough nutrients in the soil or a regular supply of water. Consuming energy. The Sahara is also home to the jerboa. The jerboa is a tiny rodent. Here it is. It has its own ways of dealing with the heat and dryness of the desert. It has short forearms and powerful back legs. It uses its arms and legs to dig into the sand. It digs until it reaches the underground roots of plants. These roots store water. Jerboas eat the roots. The roots give them energy as well as water. Some jerboas also eat insects for energy. Jerboas and foxes are consumers. Consumers are organisms that eat other organisms. All animals are consumers. Consumers eat other living things for energy and nutrients. Just like fennec foxes, jerboas are most active at night. Fennec foxes often hunt jerboas for food. 
When a fennec fox eats a jerboa, it gets some of the jerboa's energy. The fennec fox is a carnivore because it only eats other animals. The jerboa is an omnivore because it eats both plants and animals. Camels are herbivores because they only eat plants. Decomposing. All living things will die. When the jerboa and other organisms die, living things called decomposers will eat their remains. Decomposers are organisms that break down organic material and feed on the nutrients. Organic material is anything that is living or was once living. Scarab beetles are decomposers in the Sahara. They put nutrients or matter back into the ground. Plants will then use those nutrients to go, to grow. Here's the scarab beetle and it's a decomposer. Decomposers are an important part of every food chain. A food chain is the path that energy travels as one organism eats another. Energy flows from the sun to plants and then consumers and decomposers. A food web is a visual that shows the network of food chains. It shows how organisms are linked by the flow of energy. World biomes. The Sahara is one example of a desert biome. A biome is a specific geographic area with a particular climate that supports different kinds of organisms. There are many different biomes around the world. Each biome has its own type of living things. There are Arctic biomes and tropical biomes. There are also ocean biomes and freshwater biomes. No matter what kind of biome it is, all living things need energy to grow, move, and reproduce. Because of this, every biome has food webs with producers, consumers, and decomposers. The organisms in the Sahara can survive the harsh conditions of the desert biome. However, they would not survive long in other biomes that have different climates and geographies. So here we have an Arctic biome, an ocean biome, and a freshwater biome. Life in the Amazon. The Amazon rainforest is an example of a tropical biome. Like the Sahara, the Amazon is located in the tropical climate zone. It is found in South America. However, unlike the Sahara, the Amazon gets a lot of rain every year. Temperatures are usually between 21 and 32 degrees Celsius or 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The rainfall and warm temperatures mean that there are many more kinds of living things in the Amazon than in the Sahara. The organisms that live in the Amazon are very different from those that live in the Sahara. For example, there's so much rain in the Amazon that many plants have leaves with drip tips and waxy surfaces. This lets water drain quickly. Many plants also have shallow roots. So here's an example of a drip tip on a leaf. Flow of energy in the Amazon. The plants of the Amazon absorb the sun's energy. Like all plants, they are producers. They use photosynthesis to capture energy from sunlight and turn it into glucose. Plants in the Amazon often produce fruit that feeds many of the herbivores and omnivores of the rainforest. The toco toucan lives in the Amazon. It has a large, colorful beak. Toco toucans are consumers. They use their beaks to get food for energy. They can reach fruit on branches that are too small to support their weight. They can also catch insects, eggs, and lizards with their long tongues. They eat both plants and animals. So toco toucans are omnivores. There are many different decomposers in the Amazon. Earthworms, fungi, and termites are decomposers. Decomposers return nutrients back to the ground. Plants absorb those nutrients from the soil. The nutrients help plants grow. Eagles in the Amazon. The harpy eagle. The harpy eagle is one of the largest and most powerful eagles in the world. Its claws are the same size as a grizzly bear's claws. 
Its wings stretch two meters or six feet across. It can see much more than people can see. Harpy eagles live in Central and South America. They are often found in the Amazon rainforest. Unlike some birds, the harpy eagle does not fly above the trees. Instead, harpy eagles fly between the trees of the forest. A forest is an area of land covered by trees. They also build nests for their young high up in the tallest trees. The nests are sometimes made up to 300 sticks and branches. They can be large enough to fit an adult human. Forming groups. Harpy eagles mate for life. This means that some harpy eagles pairs stay together for 30 years. They work together to raise their young. The female harpy eagle lays one or two eggs. She then sits on the egg until it is ready to hatch. This usually takes about 55 days. During this time, the male harpy eagle hunts. He brings back the food he catches to the nest to feed the female. Once the egg hatches, this food will also feed the baby harp eagle. Working together helps the harpy eagles get food. They can also help each other defend their nests from predators. A predator is an animal that eats other animals. Animals that get eaten by other animals are called prey. Not all animals mate for life. Some kinds of animals form larger groups. For example, ants form colonies where each ant has a job. Some ants get food for the colony. Some protect the colony. Some build tunnels. Others raise the young. A healthy ecosystem. Scientists study harpy eagles because they are predators at the top of the food chain. Harpy eagles are carnivores. They consume many different kinds of animals. They eat monkeys, sloths, iguanas, large rodents, and other birds. Scientists study harpy eagles. The eagles are part of an ecosystem. An ecosystem is a community of different organisms that depend on interacting with each other and their physical environment for survival. All of the different parts of an ecosystem depend on one another. A biome can be made up of many smaller ecosystems. In the Amazon rainforest, the ecosystems include all of the producers, consumers, and decomposers in the food web. It also includes non-living parts. Non-living parts include oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It also includes water and energy from the sun. This sloth is part of an Amazon ecosystem. The trees, air, and sunlight are also part of the ecosystem. Endangered eagles. If the number of harpy eagles decreases, it tells scientists that something is wrong in the ecosystem. It could be that there aren't enough animals for the eagles to consume, or it could mean there aren't enough trees for the eagles. Humans have cut down many trees in the rainforest. The removal of trees by humans is called deforestation. People use the wood of the trees to build homes, furniture, and other items. People also use the cleared land for farming. The loss of trees harms the harpy eagle. This is because the eagles need large amount of forest to hunt. They also need trees to build their nests. Conservation. Scientists are working to protect the harpy eagle through conservation. Conservation is the study of how to protect organisms and their ecosystems. Conservation tries to protect the organisms we share the planet with. For example, scientists have learned that harpy eagles can survive in some environments that people have changed. They just need enough food to eat and tall trees to nest in. One way to protect the harpy eagle is to prevent humans from cutting down large amounts of rainforests. Scientists are also following eagles in the wild to learn more about what, how, and where they hunt. Whales in the Sahara. The Valley of the Whales. More than 100 years ago, 
scientists in the Sahara made a surprising discovery. They found the skeleton of a whale. Whales are animals that live in the ocean. But the skeleton was clearly that of a whale, and it was buried in the sands of the desert. Scientists now know that the Sahara hasn't always been the world's largest hot desert. Millions of years ago, an ocean covered what is now a desert biome. Scientists learned about this change in part by studying fossils. Fossils can be the remains of ancient animals and plants. They can also be the traces or impressions of living things from past geologic ages or the traces of their activities. Fossils include bones, teeth, wood, and shells. Another kind of fossil called a trace fossil is an imprint or evidence of a living thing left behind in a rock. Fossils tell scientists about the kinds of organisms that lived long ago. They also tell about the environments the organisms lived in. How fossils form. Fossils are not easy to make. Out of the billions of creatures that have lived on Earth, only a small number have turned into fossils. Fossils can take millions of years to make. The remains of living things can become trapped in layers of rock that built up over time. These remains include whole plants and animals. They also include traces of organisms such as footprints. Over millions of years, heat and pressure turn these remains into fossils. Because of this process, the fossils in lower layers of rock are older than fossils in higher layers. Evidence of Earth's past. The fossil record is all of the fossils that have ever been found. Scientists use the fossil record to understand Earth's history. Fossils tell scientists that some kinds of plants and animals are extinct. This means that they are no longer found anywhere. The location of certain fossils around the world also show how Earth has changed over millions of years. For example, Fossils tell scientists that the climate of the Sahara has changed dramatically over time. Each time the land changed, some of the organisms that live there can no longer survive. Whales cannot survive in the Sahara today. They can only survive in the salt water of ocean biomes. And the fennec fox, jerboa, and date palm that live in the Sahara today cannot survive in the ocean. Wow, I learned a lot reading Life on Earth and I had fun also. I hope that you learned a lot and that you had fun too. I'll see you tomorrow with another one. Bye.